Well, welcome to this uh, uh, building and sharing immersive AR experiences with Adobe Aero. That's a, a mouthful, um, but it's going to be a fun presentation. Uh, lots to go through. And of course, uh, I'm uh, representing uh, Adobe and uh, Edge Gain in, in London. Um, but for, before we get started with the real session, I'd like to introduce myself a bit more. Um, I asked to introduce myself because my name is uh, very hard to uh, pronounce in another language. So my name is uh, Matthijs Klaasner. And I'm a teacher in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, I teach at the GLR. It's a graphic uh, school. Um, a vocational career school where I teach about uh, students about 16 through 20 years old, uh, higher education. And um, all my students, uh, they are doing something with uh, media and design. So, uh, of course, we can't do without the Adobe tools. Our students love to work with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. And uh, that's mainly the, the, the basic uh, uh, package that they need to, uh, to master. Uh, and I myself, I'm a teacher in uh, media design and animation. So I also like the, uh, the tools where we can do um, yeah, movement uh, with our designs like Adobe Animate, After Effects, Premiere Pro are uh, a few of my favorite tools to work with. Um, so yeah, about uh, 37 years in education because I started in education when I was four um, and I actually never left school. Um, so I um, became a teacher of animation um, while I was uh, um, still at school actually. So uh, it's a long career at school, um, but continue to enjoy um, being at school. Um, we kindly invite you to, uh, to tackle along with this session. You can uh, uh, follow along or just sit back and relax and uh, enjoy Adobe Aero uh, a bit later because we've got some great assets for you which you can download. And I think Melissa will um, share the link with you in the chat to get these resources um, to start working with Adobe Aero. Um, and of course, there's a website as well where you can find the links to all materials for these, uh, these sessions that we are doing. Um, so please follow those, uh, those links and try to create something with Arrow um, now or in the next few days uh, and share it with us because we are very curious what you uh, come up with. Um, so Adobe Arrow is much about augmented reality. And augmented reality is very hot at the moment. Um, of course, it was always a, a big deal to not use your cell phone in in class at school. Uh, but nowadays, it's uh, there are so many there are so many uh, tools available on your cell phone, uh, which get you creative. And even with Adobe Arrow, it's uh, it's fun to do creative stuff on your cell phone. Um, but what actually, what exactly is uh, augmented reality? Um, augmented reality gives you the option to um, create something mainly in 3D, but 2D is also possible, uh, a 3D object in the real world. So we are combining uh, the real world, which we see through our cameras, um, with something that we've uh, come up with. Uh, we are superimposing that content in the real world. Um, the thing that I like about augmented reality is that you're not really in your cell phone, but you're still seeing the real world around you um, and trying to connect with other people as well while you're using uh, the tool to see something awesome, um, hopefully. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's about interacting as well. Um, so it's not only putting something in the real world, like a 3D object, and that's it. No, you can also do some interaction with it. Uh, tap on your uh, 3D model and um, it will respond or maybe something will un uh, unfold like more information about the subject that, that you're seeing. Um, so lots of things can be, uh, can be done in real time. Um, so some examples of uh, uh, augmented reality. Um, in the Netherlands, we've got our uh, grocery store, the, the Albert Heijn, um, and you can collect um, yeah, 3D uh, animals like dinosaurs from uh, back in the days. Um, and you can um, yeah, put your dinosaur on table and learn more about the dinosaur while it's walking on your table in, in augmented reality on your smartphone. Um, so it's, it's fun, but also informative because you learn a lot about these creatures as well. Um, of course, when you're walking down the street and get some tourist information, um, that's augmented reality. 
and I like to use it in education as well um, to get students more interactive with the content uh, instead of reading the books, which is uh, sadly enough not the most uh, uh, enjoyable uh, option anymore, uh, reading a book. Darn. Um, so let's see uh, another example of uh, um, augmented reality with this lovely um, uh, painting of uh, Picasso, Guernica. Um, and in this painting, you can, um, yeah. Are you, we're not seeing a screen, so I'm not sure if you're screen sharing right now. Really? Ah, darn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like painting. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I am screen sharing. Okay, no worries. There we go. Now yeah. you can see. <laughs> well, you haven't missed much. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, this, this video is quite important. So thank you for um, letting me know, Melissa. Because um, this is a, a painting of, um, of Picasso where you can actually walk through the uh, the, yeah, the 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 painting and see uh, in the layers of the of the painting more information and you can read all about the 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 uh, the, 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 the elements in the painting um, so really searching for clues searching for more information um, in this lovely piece of art of course um, so we're we're sharing that as well on our spark page so no worries, um, you can find the whole video over there. Um, but this is actually done with augmented reality uh, with Adobe Aero. Um, so another uh, few things um, that you can do in education, of course, is um, yeah, searching for, uh, for interaction with your objects. Um, really uh, um, yeah, get, in, get interactive with the, the items that you're creating. And that's something that you can do with Adobe Aero. Um, so what I tend to do um, um, with my students um, is the, the following um, here in the right bottom corner that's a paper toy and eventually when I was still teaching at school in, in a classroom like we used to do a few weeks ago a few months ago actually um, this was an assignment where we uh, we invited the students to come up with a paper toy a paper superhero um, and they needed to convert that uh, uh, or to, to print that paper arrow on uh, uh, that, that paper superhero um, and cut it out and um, put it together uh, like a real paper figure. Uh, but I thought, well, while we are using the Adobe tools, why not also use Adobe Arrow and make a real 3D paper toy out of it um, and add it to uh, our um, yeah, augmented reality. So let's see. And this is a bit of Dutch language in there, but this gives, this gives you probably the idea. Um, students are uh, building their uh, uh, skin for their paper superhero in Photoshop or Illustrator and then wrapping it around a 3D model. And that 3D model um, 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 is given with the asset assets for this session as well. Um, so I think without further ado, I'd like to start with showing you my paper toy, my paper arrow toy inside of Cinema 4D where my adventure starts and then jump into the other tools to create an augmented um, um, experience. So let's get over to Cinema 4D. So what I've done is I've created a, a basic 3D uh, figure, um, not too many polygons. This is Cinema 4D. Um, maybe you've heard about it, um, worked with it. It's free for students and teachers, so that's a, a cool thing to know. Um, but this is a really basic figure um, where I've put my own uh, texture on created an illustrator um, but the cool thing is that when i save this as an object file an obj file i can stick every single texture on it and it will fit immediately um, if i follow my my template that i've created um, so when your students are working on a given uh, 3d object they just have to go into uh, to photoshop and texture it over there um, which isn't as tempting as a, a 3d interface of uh, uh, for example uh, Cinema 4D or 3 Studio Max or other tools that are available. 
Um, so when I take a look at my UV edit, in here we will see my, um, my texture over here on the left hand side. So I've created the texture um, from all sides of uh, the character and it's wrapped around it in 3D in order to make uh, um, yeah, a, a seamless uh, 3D character in here. So that's basically the thing that I've done myself uh, and not as much for my first year students uh, which are 16, never seen a 3D uh, tool uh, in their life <laughs> or at least not worked with it. Um, so this is my idea of uh, bringing 3D into their workflow um, um, which isn't that scary at all. Um, so this texture. This texture is made in Adobe Illustrator on a squared page. So, um, and um, basically what I've given my students is uh, a file with just a cutout of the, um, the 3D model. It's all unfolded. And basically when you print it and put it together, stick it together with, with glue, then you've got your 3D model as well. Um, but of course our idea is to create it uh, and augment it a reality. Um, so this is my texture. And of course, you or your students, uh, they can go into the file and, and alter it. Maybe it isn't the correct scout outfit. You need to change the colors. Um, all is possible, of course, within, uh, within Adobe Illustrator. So if I go to my uh, swatches and uh, select another color, let's get my default swatches again. There you go. And I uh, want to make a green outfit uh, out of it. Um, that's no problem at all as well. So basically altering it um, lets you uh, create uh, or personalize your, your character with ease and just save it as a, uh, an Adobe Illustrator file. And that will do in order to get it into uh, Photoshop on the 3D model. Um, important in this workflow is that you keep uh, you keep yourself to the rules of this this template. So um, all the polygons of the 3D model are set accurately. Um, so when you're uh, yeah, just um, coloring in uh, the, the polygons, actually, it will work directly in, in 3D uh, in Photoshop. So I'm gonna command Z and keep with the brown scout outfit uh, and save the file. And there are actually uh, four of these templates already given uh, within the assets. So you can download them and start working on those um, or just create one of your own. Um, but yeah, the important part is to, to get into Photoshop and do some 3D in there. I don't know if you've got any experience already with 3D in, uh, in Photoshop, um, but yeah, Photoshop is a real, uh, power machine it can do a lot of things you can video edit in, in Photoshop but yeah you can also do uh, 3d um, and within the assets you've got the uh, paper toy .obj file um, and that can be opened in Photoshop so when I drag it over to Photoshop or just file and open um, it will create a new 3d document so let's um, Camp. Uh, I leave all the defaults as they are. So, okay. There we go. And this is our uh, 3D character. There isn't a texture on it yet, but it knows where to place the texture. So you can have a look around it in Photoshop, uh, play with the light source as well. And orbit that around and you can see the shadows following as well. Um, but yet there's no fun in it without the texture. Um, the texture can be found over here in the layers panel. So on the right hand side you can see all the texture information over here, um, including the default textures. And that's actually the thing, uh, the texture that I've put on it in Cinema 4D. So let's open with a double click and in here you can see all the polygons as they are. Um, it's a squared image, 
And if you remember in, in Illustrator, uh, the texture was squared as well, so it will fit correctly. So let's just um, copy and paste it in here or just place it inside of this Photoshop document. So file and uh, place embed, it will embed the texture inside this Photoshop document. Linked is also an option. Um, and let's go for a Scout 1 that looks a bit like me. Um, so let's place it inside of this document. There we go. Hit OK. And as you can see, it will uh, fit, uh, fit correctly on the, uh, uh, the template below. Um, when you're happy with it, just hit. Um, if hit the V over here, agree. There we go. And now it's uh, in inside of this file. This little asterisk over here, this little star, um, shows us that uh, the file isn't saved. So when I go back to my original 3D file, it doesn't show show you anything um, at all. Um, so I need to save it. Command. S or Control S on Windows, um, and then I can go back to the paper toy. And because of the work in uh, um, uh, in Cinema 4D, it will now texture correctly on all the sides of the character. Pretty cool, right? And it's not that it's not that hard. Um, yeah, the, the hard part is probably creating the uh, 3D object, but even that, it's quite simple. Um, so texturing it in Photoshop is even even more fun. Now the idea is to get this 3D object um, where you're totally happy with it. So the skin is correct. Um, then you need to, to, yeah, to upload it to the Creative Cloud in order to get it on your cell phone. Because yeah, it's augmented when you're watching through it on your mobile device. So we need to upload it to the Creative Cloud. Um, and in order to, uh, to make use of, uh, of Adobe Aero, you need to have an, an Apple device, an iPad or an iPhone in order to make it work. There is, uh, as far as I know, not yet an, uh, uh, an Android uh, solution for it from Adobe. Um, I'm sure it will arrive, um, but not yet. Um, so in order to get this, uh, this document in the cloud, I need to export the 3D layer. So from the 3D menu, we can export it. Um, and of course, they need to know what file type we will uh, need to use. Um, and what works best for um, uh, Adobe Arrow is the OpenGL format. Um, so while selecting OpenGL, um, we can leave all the, 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 uh, the default settings and hit OK. And let's save it in the Creative Cloud folder. Scout demo. There we go. Um, quick question. Yeah, sure. What program do you use to 3D model? Um, that uh, the 3D model uh, solution is, in my case, Cinema 4D. Mm, okay. Uh, uh, which is cool because it's free for education. Um, but basically, you can do this with every kind of uh, 3D tool. I know that uh, 3D Studio Max is a good solution as well. And all those tools give, um, are able to give you an OBJ file, which Photoshop can handle. Um, so yeah, but in my case, I'd like, I'd like Cinema 4D uh, very much because it's a, a tool which, uh, yeah, which we use a lot at school for motion design, um, motion graphics. Uh, and it's not that hard. It's not a tempting interface. It's not as tempting as the others. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, we need to uh, to upload it to the to the Creative Cloud. Um, there are two ways to 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 do that. Of course, when you've installed your Adobe software, there's a folder on your hard drive uh, with all your Creative Cloud files. Or you can save it in there, and then it will upload automatically. Or you can go to uh, Creative Cloud uh, Creative.adobe.com, um, where all your assets are as well, and just upload it in that website. 
um, but it needs to be um, um, online. And from that moment on, we can grab our cell phone. It's a little bit later over here. <laughs> then it's at your end. Um, so let's unlock it. And go into uh, my Adobe uh, apps, uh, quite a lot on my cell phone. Um, but for now, um, Adobe Aero is uh, the one that we need. Um, I hope that you can see my cell phone correctly. Perfect. I see some nodding. Okay. So in here, um, this is the, the interface. And of course, you will need to uh, log in to the Creative Cloud account in order to, uh, to make use of the, of the app. I already did that. Um, and it shows me uh, the things that I've already tried with Adobe Aero uh, quite a lot already. Um, but of course, it starts with a new project inside of your uh, Creative Cloud, uh, inside of your, your Aero app. So I hit the plus sign over here. Uh, and with the plus sign, um, you can start a new project. And it actually asks you to, um, you have to set some points on your desk in my case. And now it knows where the surface is and I can uh, drop the pin. And that's the place where I can uh, uh, create my, my 3D object that I've just created. So when I hit the plus sign uh, again, I can start with uh, some starter assets. Arrow comes with a lot of uh, uh, cool assets already, um, or just go straight on to my uh, Creative Cloud folder. And in here, we can find the demo, uh, the Scout demo that I've just created. No preview available yet, but I can use it already. And there it is. It's inside of my, my office right now. Uh, but still a bit floating in the air. Um, I can uh, scale with pinching like this and just drop it where I'd like. There we go. And when I'm happy with it, I can just uh, hit place. And now it's on my desk. Something like this. And we can uh, really get a, a 360 view around uh, the character if my cable was long enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's already pretty cool uh, for students to, to see this working on their cell phone. Um, and of course, yeah, being a teacher, I'd like to give grades for uh, this well, pretty amazing work, I think. Um, so I would like to give a grade for it, but the student needs to, uh, yeah, needs to hand in their project, of course. Um, well, a great way to do that is just share out the, the, uh, the footage with this share button over here. And the share button will allow you to, uh, to record a video, uh, shoot a picture, or just share a link with the teacher in this case. Um, but I'd like to, uh, to record it, preparing the scene. And now it's just like a regular, uh, the, the camera app on your smartphone. Just hit the record button, allow it. And there we go. Probably while screen sharing it uh, isn't uh, isn't doing the the best of job. Um, when I hit the camera button, it will uh, create a, a photo as well, and that will allow you to uh, to uh, uh, to hand it in. And of course, when I uh, create a video, it will be saved directly to your uh, camera roll, not to the Creative Cloud, uh, but to the camera roll in order to uh, yeah, to share it. Um, Pretty cool, I think. Hope that uh, hope that you liked the, the tool as well. Um, of course, I've spoken about um, um, interacting uh, with a three D object as well. Um, so when I want to do some interaction with this character, that's also an option. Just by uh, tapping on the the character, it will allow you to uh, to see the uh, the behaviors down below. Uh, Let's see if this works a little bit better. Um, and of course, we can uh, do some rotating and scaling afterwards or moving it uh, in, a, in a, better, a better position. Something like this. Maybe that's better. Um, but 
the cool thing is, uh, at least I think, is that uh, we can add some behaviors to it and add some triggers. So when I select a trigger, and um, well, let's do a tap. Uh, now it expects a tap action on the object, and we could add an action to it. And there are lots of things that you can choose from, even opening a URL of a website. Um, but in this case, let's do a bounce. So when I tap on the character, um, when I'm sharing out this uh, this uh, this character, um, it jumps up. So let's see if that uh, if that works. Let's go to preview. And now when I uh, tap on the character, it will jump up and down. And still, you can see everything around the character. Um, so yeah, lots of things that you can do with this, uh, this character. So this is the, the idea of uh, working with a paper toy. Um, are there any questions about that part? which I can touch base on. I think we're all cool. No? <laughs> if, you do, if you do have a question, please uh, shout out. Um, another thing that I'd like to show you and show you later on in the, in the app is uh, uh, a little bit like the, the Guernica uh, um, uh, video that you just saw, that you've just seen. Um, let's open up another file. It looks yeah, like we have a question. question. Yeah, oh, yeah, that just came in. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, the question is, how do you get it to anchor? Yeah, so um, I, I may be trailing behind a little bit, but it might, I have a little one of the sample assets, and I'm trying to get it to anchor to, it, right now it kind of floats in space. I'm trying to get it to, to anchor to my surface that I have identified. Okay, then I'll show, uh, share. Oh, great that you're tackling along. That's, that's cool. Um, let's see where my. Oh, just close down. Quick time player. Yeah, there we go again. Um, so let's um, do that one more time. Let's hit the plus sign. Of course, you've already done that, but I need to make the surface again. And then when you tap on the, the needle, it will know its location. Then of course, use one of the, uh, the assets. And now when you are, um, uh, now when you're tap on the character, it will fit to the original position. And then the, the ground surface uh, um, is removed as well. Okay, great, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Great, there was a question, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, another um, uh, thing that I'd like to show you um, is the campsite.psd. It's not a really complicated uh, file. It, uh, it's just a file with some layers in there. Um, so I've got a background with some clouds. Um, so let's see how it's built up. So I've got a background with clouds and uh, the grass, some mountains in the back and a few in front of those mountains, uh, trees. But yeah, in Photoshop, it's still a flat image. There's no depth in there. Um, and I'd like to yeah, wander through it, uh, through this, uh, this campsite. Um, so of course this needs to be saved in the Creative Cloud as well. Um, we have another question. Yeah. Uh, does one need to be affiliated with a college to get free Adobe software? Can independent slash visiting teachers get Adobe software for free to learn, use, and to teach? Um, Luckily, it, it was free for the last few months during the, the extreme corona crisis. Well, it's still extreme, but um, but now I don't know what the solutions are in, in the States. Um, so I don't really know the numbers for, for that. Um, I know my school needs to pay for, for Adobe. Uh, probably that's Yeah, I can word. kind of add to that just a little bit. So um, you can, anyone can download the seven day trial. But um, so these institutions are actually paying to get this software. So it's not technically free. You are being provided through your institution. Um, but 
not every institution is making use to this. But yes, talk to your school administrator or your IT administrator. And um, that's probably the first step to figure out if you have it through your school or if you don't. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. At my school, we're still stuck in Adobe Creative Cloud uh, 2018. Hopefully after the summer, we are up to date as well. So yeah, that's all depending on what type of contract you've got. Um, so I've just saved it to the Creative Cloud again. So this file is uh, is in the uh, in the Creative Cloud, and um, I'm gonna open my app one more time and share it with you. Of course, there we go. Um, so again, I need to uh, uh, make sure that uh, I've got a ground floor uh, a surface. There we go. And I need to add something from the Creative Cloud. And there we go, it's already uploaded. So this is the file that I want to use and hit open. It takes a little while to load all those layers. Uh, quite a while, but it's nearly there. There we go. And this is my uh, still flat image, um, but that's by default. It's a flat image, but yeah, you can see it's not a 3D object. So also 2D objects can be placed in there. Um, but what I can do with a, a Photoshop file is not only add a behavior to it, um, but now there is a new button down below and that's the layers button. And we can, um, separate those uh, those layers uh, through an axis. So over the X axis is an option. Uh, I always have a trouble with keeping X, Y, and Z. Let's add a bit closer oh, on the Z axis. And now you can see what, uh, what's been happening. And this is exactly the same thing that, uh, uh, that you've seen in the, the Picasso Guernacker um, example. So you can wander through and play with fire without any, uh, any issues. Um, but yeah, this is also an option with Adobe, uh, Adobe Aero. I guess pretty cool as well. And there are lots of, uh, of other options as well um, within the, the Arrow app. So when, you, um, uh, you're not, uh, when you're not willing to, to create something in Photoshop or Illustrator uh, just yet, um, it's also fun to, uh, to start working with those uh, basic assets. from the, the starter assets. So in here you can find lots of other um, um, examples as well, which you can use. Um, the toy display um, is a 3D model, very nicely textured, which you can place in there. There we go. And of course, we can add some uh, some elements to it as well, um, like a behavior, and all basically works the same. Um, so when I tap on it, um, it needs to uh, play some audio or play an animation in there. Don't know if there is an animation in it. Uh, there's no animation in there just yet. Um, but yeah, this is a, a nice uh, a nice object to start working with. Um, or the Toy Store is also a nice example. Uh, 
Uh, let's see the uh, Toy Store backdrop. And that's also a PSD file. Um, let it load with lots of layers in there. Um, but you can actually go through it and see the rubbish on my desk. <laughs> Um, but also, uh, when you're selecting that uh, um, that file, we can go into the layers with the button down below and play with the Z axis to give some more depth to it. So, what are your uh, what are your ideas about how to use AR in in education? Do you see some solutions for it? Some ideas? Anyone? <laughs> um, hi, this is Chris from Berkeley. So I work with a lot of museums here at the University of California. And this could be you know, obviously a great way to bring some of the objects buried in the collection that people can't even go to now and bring them into their homes and allow people to um, look at them, turn them around, zoom in on them, and even look at annotations that the, the museum experts, uh, curators mm -hmm. have added to the, to, the, to the object. Yeah, definitely. That's a great idea. I know here in, in Amsterdam, we've got the, our Rijksmuseum, where the rambands are, on, are hanging on the wall. Uh, of course, until a few weeks ago, we were not allowed to go there. And if you can visit those paintings uh, through augmented reality, uh, it's definitely a solution. Um, so yeah, great idea to do something with, uh, with art in your classroom. I also see it as a, hi Matthias. Hey I Penny. Also, <laughs> I also <laughs> see it as a great way to um, sort of show, not so much instructional from a student standpoint, but a, um, a storyline where they could create a character that could um, navigate them mm -hmm. through an environment. Um, I know it's not, real time but you you could set it up ahead of time so they can tell quite a story yeah definitely yeah yeah for me it's mainly as a a tool where we are creating because my students are um, media designers so they need to get their hands into ar and vr and start working with it because it's something mm -hmm. that sorry. the industry wants okay. yeah <laughs> hey there you're <laughs> sorry I've so many screens here but no this is great i love that there's layers that you can move around because when arrow first came out i don't remember layers mm -hmm. yeah true that's great yeah it's a, a tool where um where uh, already a lot is possible and indeed uh, a while ago when it was in beta uh, not that much was possible yet right. um but yeah, it's getting more and more interesting to do stuff with uh, with ar and vr so more and more options are in there and I think when I last opened the, the tool, I was amazed with the amount of behaviors that are uh, possible right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So also, yeah, interaction makes it even more fun to, to work with it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, oh. There we go. Um, so to, to wrap up this... Uh, um, that's one thing. Um, it always forgets where the ground floor was, so you need to show that again. Um, so you can um, 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 export it out uh, as a as a video, um, but also uh, uh, yeah, share the link, and it will create a link um, which you can share. Because of course, when you're sharing it out as a video, then all the interaction is gone. It's just a, a, a movie. Um, and when you're sharing this cloud document uh, as an AR solution, um, then you can add all the interaction in there and it will work um, um, in, in mobile apps. So let's share it. You have 10 minutes remaining. Okay, thank you. Let's paste it. It doesn't want to paste. I'm on beta in, in iOS and not everything works. Uh, 
Um, I just noticed that there's a really good question about what's next with this technology that maybe Matthias, you can, what do you think they're going to develop next? <laughs> Well, I, I think especially in, in, in these times, it's, uh, it's very important to, to have those, those solutions uh, like AR and VR. Um, I, I see a, a, a nice future for, for augmented reality. I don't know if I'm that fond of VR, so really closing off for the reality and just um, yeah, uh, live in your, in your uh, goggles. Um, but yeah, AR can go... Uh, can go for yeah, I, if, if I don't mean to interrupt, but I just realized yeah. with all the new AR glasses coming out, with all the new glass sets, are, are these things we create in Arrow going to be able to be exported or imported into the glass? You, you know, I imagine Adobe is working on that already, but... Um, I just realized that when you start putting the glasses on, you don't have the phone as your interface anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. It probably will be uh, will be something. Yeah. Uh, but there's also there's always needed need for an app around it. Um, but if that app allows you to yeah to uh, get rid of the interface, because that's the, the the hard part. You're always inside of an interface. Um, in glasses, yeah, it will work. Um, and I think uh, a few years ago when this was just started, I thought it was more like a hype or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really getting there and it's getting more interesting to, to use. Uh, people are more um, used to work with, with their cell phones. Um, um, I think we are now uh, watching websites more and more on mobile first instead of on our desktop computer. Um, Chris is walking around. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's really fun to work with it. So I think it's gonna gonna yeah. stay for uh, for quite a while. Yeah. Well, a couple of other questions are coming in, Matthias. Um, right. But I, I I do think everything you said is is super accurate, and I think it's important to keep in mind that a lot of these Adobe apps we're seeing when they first came out, kind of like you said, we're like, oh, maybe it's just a hype, but the updates we've been seeing are, whoa. <laughs> Definitely, so, yeah. You know, I think that's going to keep going. That's kind of the theme here. Um, Stacy's asking, um, can you set objects to connect together when manipulated? Um, so, Stacy, are you asking if we can have more than one little character? Yeah, I'm asking if you can um, actually have two different objects and have them interact with one another, if you drag one over the other or... Um, you can have multiple multiple objects, um, um, but interaction between the two of them, um, that's not possible uh, yet. I think that's something that's coming. And I'm also hoping for an option to, to interact when getting closer to an object myself. So if I come closer with my camera, then something needs to, uh, needs to respond. That's not there yet as well. Um, so it's really about tapping on objects now um, to, to get a uh, response. Um, so it's, it's, it's coming, I'm, I'm pretty sure, but not yet. Um, Chris is also asking what other 3D formats does Arrow understand? Do we know if OBJ files are coming? <laughs> um, yeah, OBJ is something that's uh, uh, that's known uh, for its being. Yeah, it's really transparent on on, uh, on many uh, software applications. Um, there are probably more options available. Um, but the thing is, when you go to uh, a 3D layer inside of Photoshop. Um, there are just a few options available in Photoshop itself, and these are the ones. So um, here's the OBJ file. OpenGL is an option, um, but yeah, the most default one is is OBJ. Um, you can't go wrong on that one. Thanks. Uh, does Arrow understand OBJ though? Though. Um, I've got I've got more success with Arrow in in OpenGL. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm not aware of what types are most common for, for Arrow. 
Okay. Other than open jail. I'll look that up. Thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, it's interesting when uh, uh, what's coming uh, next in terms of uh, yeah, new technology. There's always always something new. Um, let's go back to the uh, slide deck because I don't think there are any more questions. If you do have your questions, now's the time. Um, um, but I would like to uh, remind you that there is a uh, lot of fun things coming this week. Um, so there's a. Uh, a nice website, uh, our Spark page with all the content on there uh, for, for this week's sessions. Um, tomorrow I will be back for a, a character animator uh, session, also a very new tool and extremely powerful. So when you are uh, really into uh, animation um, or want to do something with animation, but you simply just can't yet, um, please uh, follow along tomorrow as well. With uh, with character animator is a fun tool um, to to work with and and not that hard to get started with. Um, so if there are no questions uh, left, I'd like to leave you with um, the email address of uh, of Greg at edgegain dot uh, edgegain ltd dot com um, for any Adobe related uh, questions, um, or if you've got some for me, just shout now. <laughs> Um, and I hope to, uh, to have inspired you with, uh, uh, yeah, to work with Adobe Arrow. That was awesome. Thank you, Matthias. <laughs> You're welcome. Does anyone, does anyone have any questions? I mean, we've got some time. So if you have questions, that was a great time to ask. Um, but if you don't have questions, next we've got XD going on. So XD is a lot of fun. With the uh, wonderful yeah. Mark Shuffle button. Yes. Mark cool. is great. Matthias is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and can confirm character animator super easy to get started once you're in there. Uh, Matthias just said that because I was one of those people who said, "How can I do that? That looks really hard." And I got in there and I said, "Oh, this not that hard." <laughs> but we're we're right. gonna keep it a, keep it a secret because. <laughs> it's still animation. Yeah. It's yeah, it's fun. Um you can go in and create your own characters too, which uh you know, especially for everyone who's online teaching right now, create your own character. How cool is that? Oh, Victoria loves character animator. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I see, what I see happening with my students is that uh, not all of them uh, are really happy to sit in front of the webcam and showing their faces uh, uh, while while in class. Um, so if you could uh, create your own character um, and still attend and respond in uh, in some of these online classes as a character, uh, that's so much fun. Should be good. Well, but yeah, that's the moral. <laughs> Alrighty, well, thank no you so much Caitlin, for presenting. You. <laughs> You're welcome, my pleasure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bump everybody back over to the waiting room um, while Mark gets set up. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Character animator is really, it's so much easier to pick up than it looks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's really cool that you were able to uh, share your phone screen and everything and just show the whole process. Perfect. Well, my pleasure. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.